How to get out of debt fast, part two. I have all the details and what you need to know right here in the video, so let's get right into it. All right, recently I was out in a separate video titled, How to get out of debt fast. Well, this video is going to be the second iteration of this series where we're going to be talking about a completely separate strategy to eliminate your debt and ultimately become financially free, which is ultimately the goal of pretty much everybody, right? Well, before we get into that, I completely recognize there are numerous different ways to eliminate your debt and to become debt free. However, as I said in the other video, all I want to do is introduce some of these strategies to you and ultimately find something that best fits you, your personality, and of course, your personal situation and what you see fit to ultimately eliminate your debt as quickly as possible. So let's get into it and discuss all the details of this new strategy. And of course, I can continue on with this series for many more iterations to come so that you can find something that works best for you and your situation because ultimately, is it fun being in debt? Well, no, not really, right? I mean, maybe sometimes, but realistically, for the most part, no, it is never fun being in debt. Now, let's quickly run through what I talked about in that previous video, just really fast here, which by the way, if you did not see that previous video from just a little while ago, I would highly recommend going back and checking that one out after you get done watching this one so you can hear the full story and the full strategy behind what I actually laid out in that video. But really briefly, let's just say this much. So in that video, basically what I was telling you to do is find all of your debts, whether you have two debts, five debts, seven, 12, 20, or 72 debts. Let's just hope that you don't have 72 debts. I really hope that you don't have that many. But basically all I was asking you to do is go through all of your debts and categorize them from smallest debt to largest debt. And again, your debt could be $500 on a credit card. It could be a $1,000 car loan. I mean, seriously, just go on and on and lay them all out from smallest debt to largest debt. Now, basically what I was saying in that last video is aggressively start attacking the smallest of the debts until it's completely gone and then move your way up the ladder and go on to the next debt work on that one until it's gone and continue to work your way up that ladder until all of them are eventually gone now obviously the bigger that you go up the ladder and the bigger debts that you are attacking it's going to take longer and longer but at the same time at least you don't need to continue servicing all of those smaller debts along the way all right so that's basically the premise behind the first strategy that we talked about in that last video but again Again, if you didn't see that video, go back and check it out because there is some pretty good information in that one and I talk about all the details in greater uh, detail. All right, so now let's talk about another strategy and again, this one works, but I'm going to be honest with you. This one is not the most effective strategy. The one strategy that I shared with you in that first video is probably the most effective strategy. Uh, but again, let's talk about another one because I want to do what's best for you, your personal situation, and of course, your personality. Everybody doesn't have the same personality. Therefore, one debt elimination strategy that works for one person may not work for somebody else and may not be the best fit. So now let's talk about this next strategy that I want to share with you as well. And a lot of people do implement this one as well and that's totally fine you can implement this one and it may work for you in your situation or you may say nah this one doesn't work as well and that's totally fine either I can come back in separate videos and talk about many more strategies but here's what it all comes down to so some people like to go after the debts that have the biggest interest rate or the highest interest rate and again logically you would think well yeah that would make the most sense because if you're paying say 1% on some kind of loan, maybe 25% on a credit card, you're paying 6% on a, an auto loan, and you're paying, say, 3% on a mortgage or something like this, which, by the way, in most of these instances, mortgages are not included because realistically, we want to get rid of consumer debt and then worry about mortgages later because mortgages are going to take a very long time. A mortgage is not something that you're going to pay off in most instances in the next two months, four months, six months, or even in the next year or two. In many instances, it's going to take people five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years to pay off a mortgage and working at it very diligently. So again, we can talk about mortgages in a separate video, but again, in most instances, we are sp simply talking about consumer debts. Again, credit cards, auto loans, personal loans, things like this. These are the debts that we're talking about as far as consumer debts. All right, so here's what it comes down to. A lot of people like to focus on the debts that have the highest interest rate. And again, like I said, logically, this would make sense because if you're paying a small 
percentage on one debt, maybe 7% on an auto loan, 25% on, um, on a credit card, and it goes on and on, right? So it would logically make sense, why don't I go after the credit card first because that's where I'm paying the most interest. And again, this strategy does work. However, let's just say for example, Let's just say that you have an auto loan at 7% interest and you have $3,000 left to pay on it. Now, let's just say that you also have a personal loan with a, say, 3.5% interest rate and you have, say, $2,500 on that loan. Now, let's just say that you have a credit card that is charging you, say, 22% interest right now and you have, say, $12,000 on that card, which, by the way, right now, the average person has a little over $7,000 on their credit card, as in credit card debt. So again, it's a lot of money, right? But here's the thing. If you start attacking that bigger debt, they say the $12,000 on your credit card at a 25% interest rate. Yes, you are by far paying the most interest on that one right there. However, as a result of this, you're gonna continue paying on the smaller two debts that you have. Remember, the $3,000 auto loan at 7% and the other personal loan at uh, $2,500 at a 3.5% uh, rate or whatever I said it was, 3%, something like that. Uh, so the fact of the matter is, as you continue to attack this, say, $12,000 debt that's your, that you're paying a 25% uh, interest rate on, yes, that sounds good, but it's gonna take you a very, very long to get ahead of this. However, now again, let's just say for the example, let's just say that you paid down your little personal loan of $2,500 relatively quickly. Well, what would you be able to do then? You could take all of that money that you've been putting toward that personal loan and you could pile it onto that credit card, right? Or what would happen at rather if you followed that first strategy that I shared with you in the first video and you take care of the first debt, the $2,500, then you go on and you start working on the $3,000 auto loan, that one's gone, and then guess what? You get to focus all of your attention on that $12,000 credit card debt. Now again, it might take a few months to get to it, but the fact of the matter is, uh, at least those debts are out of there. They're out of your face. You don't need to worry about them anymore. You don't need to pay on them anymore. They're completely gone. They've been eliminated, and now you can focus all of your attention on that credit card. So again, these are just some examples that I'm giving. Of course, everybody's situation is different and all the interest rates are different, but again, this is just something that I wanna lay out for you. So you certainly could uh, just avoid those other two loans, uh, the other two debts that you have. You can continue paying the, the minimum payments on them as I've described, described in that other video. Just continue paying the minimums on it if you wanted to and put any extra money that you have toward your credit card. That's totally fine too. This strategy does work. It's just gonna take a little bit longer because now you're servicing all three debts simultaneously and and you're attacking the largest one uh, first, which again is fine. It happens to be the largest one and it happens to be the one with the largest interest rate as well. So again, I've been there, done that. I've done this before as well in my own personal life. I like this strategy a lot because here's the thing, I don't like paying interest. It doesn't matter if the interest is 1%, 5% or 20%, I don't like paying interest, right? I do not wanna be the person paying interest because why? It's just wasted money, right? That money is just going right into the pockets of the bank or whatever is actually holding that debt for you. So again, as a result of that, I don't like paying a lot of uh, interest on this. So I actually do like this strategy. However, it's not exactly sometimes the best strategy in the world. Uh, sometimes it does work for some people, but this is basically the idea behind it, which is basically go through all of your debts, determine how many you have, maybe it's one debt, five debts, seven debts, whatever it happens to be, and then categorize them all out. And then again, maybe you determine them at, or sorry, maybe you categorize them all out as uh, from the smallest interest rate up to the largest interest rate. And maybe you just start going after the one with the largest interest rate the most and pay on all the uh, the minimum payments on all those other ones. And then uh, at the same time, take any extra money that you may have and pile it on toward that highest interest rate loan or whatever it happens to be to get rid of that one first and then of course, that'll free up all kinds of extra money because you're not paying all that extra interest on that one at uh, going forward. And you can take all that extra money that would be going toward interest and you can pile it on toward the next highest interest rate as well. So again, it's an effective strategy. It certainly does work, but Again, you gotta find something that works best for you, your personality, and of course, your personal situation. Sometimes this works well for some people, and sometimes they say, no, I just wanna get the debts out of my face. I wanna get the, get rid of the debts as quickly as possible, and as a result of that, they work on the smallest debts first and just eliminate the bottom three or two or whatever it happens to be, and then they start to get excited. They get momentum because now they think, 
this is great. I just got rid of the, the my two lowest debts I just got rid of in three months time, they're gone. That's it, they're gone, they're out of my face. Now I can work on something else, right? So again, another strategy, or sorry, another um, idea behind this one too as well, is that if this debt that you're working on with the highest interest rate happens to be a bigger one, and it takes you quite a while to get it paid down, it might get to be a little bit discouraging as you don't really see a whole lot of progress on it. Now again, progress is always encouraging, but at the end of the day, if it's not being uh, eliminated very quickly, you might look at it and think, you know, this is gonna be really tough here. I'm paying on this thing, paying on this thing. It seems like it's only going down a couple dollars per month. I'm just not feeling like I'm making any headway here at all. So again, it can be a little bit um, a little bit discouraging when you try to work on these debts and all of a sudden it doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere with them and now all of a sudden you just wanna get the thing over with. But at the same time, as you do pay that thing down, even if you change your strategy halfway through, here's the cool thing about it. Let's just say that that $12,000 debt that you had, you're working on it, working on it, working on it for say three months, six months, nine months, something like this. And all of a sudden, say let's just say you fast forward and now that debt went from $12,000, now let's just say it's down to $8,000. You've eliminated $4,000 of that debt. Well, guess what? Now you're paying interest on less than uh, less money, right? So now you're paying interest on $8,000 versus interest on $12,000. So that's gonna help a lot as well. So either way, no matter how you cut it, it's all gonna uh, go down the same way. It's all gonna bring us to the final objective, which is eliminating debt 100% no matter the strategy that you use, at the end of the day, it's all gonna bring us the same effect. Whether you get there fast or you get there slow, ultimately, it's gonna bring you to the same destination, right? It's gonna give you a different scenic view. Sometimes it's gonna be long, sometimes it's gonna be short, sometimes it's gonna be fast, sometimes it's gonna be slow. But at the end of the day, it's all gonna arrive at the same destination, right? So anyway, hope this strategy helps you out. And again, I just wanted to introduce this other one to you. This is a very popular one. Again, I've used this in my own personal life. I've done it, I like it, simply because I don't like paying paying interest at all on anything because why? To me, it's just wasted money. I don't like wasting money. I think that's just a waste. It's a waste to waste money, right? So <laughs> I know, right? Anyway, I hope this one helps you out. Again, I can always come back in separate iterations of how to pay down debt fast. And again, I can keep going on with this on and on with more strategies. And again, like I said earlier, it doesn't really matter. Whatever fits with your personal situation, your personality, and what you see fit best into your situation, then apply it. You gotta do whatever's best for you in your situation. It is not a one size fits all approach. So anyway, hope this one helps you out. And again, just wanna introduce this one to you, but I will always come back and share more with you as we continue on here, wishing the absolute best. I hope you can get out of debt relatively quickly. It is not a fun situation, right? Again, what do you? What would you rather prefer, being in debt or out of debt? I'm guessing all of us would probably say out of debt. It's a lot better, right? It's a lot uh, more freedom in the out of debt situation. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this. Please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out some of the other thousands and thousands of videos right here on the channel. Until next time, have a good one. Thanks so much for watching this. Enjoy your day, and I'll catch you again later in the